Hello, 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 and welcome. It's been a long time, but welcome to Theo Geeks. I'm here with my host, Dale Glover, and my host from Faith Unaltered, because we got a special show for you today that Dale's going to lead us in. Hi, guys. What's going on? Welcome to Theo Geeks, everybody. What is going on, David? I'm excited to be here to talk about this tablet with Dale, brother. How you been since the last time we had you on? Oh, Dale, you're muted, sir. <laughs> and I can't unmute him. <laughs> Got the camera on, but no uh, sound. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, I think the last time I was with you guys, I was talking about the Evil God Challenge. And uh, yep. uh, I don't know how, how that show went. Did you guys uh, get any feedback? Was it all right? Or most people are like, shut that guy up. Or... The, no, from what I heard on it, I don't know about David, but everybody said you did a great job yeah. from yeah. what I heard. So That's what I heard too. And I uh, also heard that the whole... Uh, day was awesome for people so it was I, I made sure to listen to every show you guys did so uh, nice. Nice. even nice. even yeah yeah it was really I love it <laughs> even the pre-recorded <laughs> interviews oh you mean well maybe after the fact then I don't know yeah. about the, I just listened to whatever shows you guys had live I was listening nice. to that thought you guys did a great job for your launch event so yeah, yeah. yeah we got to plan another event soon too <sighs> awesome. have some giveaways this awesome. time what's that have some give giveaways this giveaways, time. Giveaways, yeah. We want to do all that type of stuff uh, on That's Faith right. and Altered. But we're on Theo Geeks today, and I'll let Dale take it away, man. Dale, what's this topic? What do you want to talk about? What are we all going to geek out about? Awesome, yeah. So so uh, as everyone knows with Theo Geeks, so that the thing is we pick out a scripture and or a theme, a scriptural theme, and talk about that. And um, there's been uh, some news in terms of biblical archaeology in the Old Testament specifically about the book of Joshua uh, in chapter 8, verses 30 to 35. There's been uh, a new finding that's just happened back in 2021. Um, it's just being announced publicly right now. I mean, all the uh, mainstream Christian apologists are talking about it. Uh, this uh, confirmation, this old text that was found, this tablet that was found, uh, it's the oldest Hebrew script in existence. It has the name Yahweh in it. Um, so obviously this has a whole bunch of um, ramifications in the industry. Um, in terms of biblical archaeology, it totally refutes the atheists and skeptics and their skeptical theories, you know, um, the biblical minimalists trying to say, oh, the Bible, the, it was all written in the Persian period and all this, the documentary hypothesis. All of this has just been refuted. Um, it's absolutely false. Um, so that... This finding is great, uh, so I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, now, I guess the first thing to do before we talk about any of the findings and stuff is to, well, what's the relevant bit of scripture? Um, so I know David likes to read that. Um, so, yeah, uh, David, do you, do you want to read Joshua I, chapter? I'll have, I'll have to pull it up. Okay. I'll have it pulled up. Okay. So it's... Uh, you have it pulled up? I do, yeah. But yeah I was... Go ahead, man. Go ahead. I, I'll let you do it this time. Okay. So our text uh, for today's show is Joshua chapter 8, verses 30 to 35. And this is where Joshua is renewing the covenant with the people. So in context, he's just defeated the city of Ai, um, and now he comes to Mount Ebel. Uh, so it says, Now Joshua built an altar to the Lord God of Israel in Mount Ebel, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded the children of Israel, as it is written in the book of the Law of Moses. An altar of whole stones over which no man has yielded an iron tool. And they offered on it burnt offerings to the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings. And there in the presence of the children of Israel, he wrote on the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he had written. Then all Israel with their elders and officers and judges stood on either side of the ark before the priests, the Levites, who bore the ark of the covenant uh, of the Lord. The, the uh, stranger as well as he who was uh, born among them. Uh, half of them were in front of Mount Gerizim and half of them in front of Mount Ebel, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded before that they should bless the people of Israel. And afterward, he read all the words of the law, the blessings and the cursings, according to all that is written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses had commanded, which Joshua did not read before all of the assembly of Israel, uh, with the women and little ones and strangers uh, living among them present. 
So that's so that's our text. And um, what's specifically of interest here archaeologically is what happened on Mount Ebel, right? So the blessings took place on Mount, um, what was it called again? Ge Mount Gerizim. Uh, Gerizim, yeah. And then the cursings took place on Mount Ebel. And Mount Ebel is where all these archaeological findings are taking place. Um, so just a little bit of background here. So this isn't the first time that Mount Ebel's actually been excavated. Um, there is a famous uh, archaeologist who is secular, not a Bible believer. This, this guy is uh, Richard Dawkins in the flesh as an archaeologist. Um, and he was a skeptic of the Bible and stuff. And he discovered on Mount Ebel an altar that this text in Joshua was talking about. And he, that dated to the 13th century B.C., uh, so that's about the 1200s BC, uh, which is where secular people date the Exodus. Um, and they found this altar. And so this totally changed this guy. And I'm sorry, I don't have his name. That's David Russell's fault. We were supposed to do the show at 10 and I had all my notes ready, uh, but it uh, got messed up. So I'm, I'm just talking off the top of my head. Uh, but this secular archaeologist, fa world famous, um, he realized what he was looking at and he believed this was Joshua's altar that's men mentioned in Josh, uh, Joshua 8 here. Um, so he totally changed his mind. He said, look, the Bible is a historically proven document. It's reliable. We should use it. And obviously the rest of the atheists and secular archaeologists, uh, you're a joke now. We don't believe you. You're, you believe the Bible's reliable. So we're just going to dismiss all of your findings. And this is the way it's been since 1980 to the present. Um, but Sad, a good, ain't it? It is, yeah. Um, you know, there's... They're just not open-minded to like even consider that consider things from a different perspective you know yeah yeah um awesome oh david you're gonna say something no 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 i'm, I'm listening man okay uh cool so so what the heck is going on now what is um so in terms of this uh altar then right the associates of biblical research these are evangelical christian archaeologists who are actually doing excavations in the holy land um i've, I've done a previous show on the conquests of jericho and i so people like dr bryant wood have done a lot of work in authenticating those conquests and showing they were historical and that sort of thing um but they came up with a theory saying look we know that the bible dates uh, the Exodus to the 15th century BC. Uh, so that's 14, 1446 is the traditional date. This is the minority opinion in, in archaeology or secular scholarship. Um, so they wanted to look at the site again um, and reevaluate it and say what actually is the case is there's actually an altar underneath the altar in the 13th century that's a lot smaller. It's It's a circular... Uh, circular one that dates to the uh, to the Bronze Age there to the 15th century BC, um, and they're saying, well, this our, our hypothesis is this is Joshua's altar mentioned in Joshua eight. So let me um, I just want to share the picture of what I'm talking about here. We'll put it up on on here. Um, share. All right, so hopefully that's showing up. Oh, yep. there it is. Awesome. So this is the the altar from the 13th century that the famous secular archaeologist found, and he attributed this rectangular, bigger one to the time of Joshua. What the associates of biblical research are saying is, no, it's the one underneath it, this small circular one. This is the one that Joshua built, that they believe Joshua built, and it dates to the time when the Bible would uh, say it happened in the 15th century BC. Okay. Um, so, so that's their hypothesis here. And in these findings, they found various dating indicators, right? So in, number one, it has been carbon dated. Um, however, those carbon dates are not reliable. I, both sides admit that. Uh, what? Dale, can I ask you real quick? Why? Why, why is that? Um, so I, there was something to do with contamination. I don't, I don't remember off the top of my head, what was the problem, but I know that's uncontroversial. Like both sides don't accept it. Um, so thankfully with the new, with the new things, they've taken collagen from bones and stuff like that from the, the cert, from the 
older uh, altar, and those are in the process of being carbon dated, and they're not going to be contaminated. So whatever date they get will be accepted. Okay. Uh, additionally, though, uh, and in this uh, circular one underneath, they've also found uh, Bronze Age pottery, again, so that's confirming the older date, and scarabs, Egyptian scarabs uh, yeah. that date to the Pharaoh Tutmos III. Um, so that's who they propose. Tutmos the third, Tutmosis, you know, Moses. Okay. That's where the name came from. This is their theory. He's the good Pharaoh. And then his son was the Pharaoh of the Exodus, the bad guy that got the 10 yeah. plagues. Amen, Amenhotep. That's their theory. It's not Ramsey says majority of archeologists say, and guess what's found here? Egyptian scarabs that are related to Tutmos the third. Um, so yeah, that, it all seems to line up, right? So now the newest findings. So these guys were, uh, let me just close that and bring up another picture. So here's a picture of the scarabs that we're talking about. Nice. Well, imagine owning one of those. Yeah. Like one of those, you know, it's like, I wouldn't be working. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'd be working. You'd be working in the other side of the world. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing up. now. <laughs> it's dirty. That's what right. the so here's the aerial shot. This is important too. You see this kind of shoe shape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is how there's a bunch of these all corresponding to the biblical conquest narratives, uh, all in a in a linear fashion that lines up with the Bible. And this is at Mount Ebel. They have this campsite. So it seems like the Israelites made campsites as literal footprints of God in the shape of footprints of God. Uh, so this is the actual site at Mount Ebel that we're talking about. Um, let me just, there's a certain, there's a specific picture I'm looking at, looking for here. Okay, so so here's, so this is where the altar is, right? Um, and what the new archaeologists have done at the Associates of Biblical Research, the new finding. So we've developed new methods that didn't exist back in the 1980s. For example, we have wet sifting. Uh, as opposed to dry sifting. And this allows us to extract texts and stuff like that from things that we couldn't get. So, yeah, Dale, do you know anything about that process uh, that you could explain a little bit of what, how that works, this new technology that they have? Because I I heard them talking about it, and I'm not, I wasn't familiar with it. Uh, so you know what? I, I don't know uh, the details. Obviously, it's wet, so I'm... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, 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 that wasn't a part of my research yet. But um, so yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> um, but anyways, they used this technique. Um, and they excavated this east dump, about 75% of it, and about 25% of the west dump. Um, and this is what, in the east dump, this is where um, the majority of the relevant findings to Joshua came in. And this is where they found this tablet, this curse tablet. That's uh, the most recent finding that's relevant to this. Um, so what the curse tablet is. So here's just a picture of what they found uh, from Mount Ebel. Wow. Just, man, it looks like something that if it was just some, you know, someone with an untrained eye was just digging around, right? They would just toss that. You know what I mean? Yeah, and these were literally found. It, even the ancients agreed with you. Yeah. This was literally in a, a dump. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, that's what I, that's what I was about to say is that like you know they 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 discarded this stuff. Amazing. Huh. Exactly. Yeah. The in archaeology, uh, trash heaps are uh, like the most. It's like a treasure. It's like a pot of gold for archaeology. One man's trash, another man's treasure. <laughs> it's so true, right? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Awesome. All right. So so what. Cool. What what is it that these guys found? This is uh, it was in the proto alphabetic script. So this is the oldest known Hebrew that ever existed. It it's before they even standardized Hebrew. The secular atheistic archaeologists they're saying, "Oh, those ignorant, savage, barbarian Hebrews they couldn't even write." Uh, give me a break. No, the the yeah. Bible was written way after in the first millennium BC. Well, here we have absolute proof, archaeological proof. No, they could write. Not only could they write, but this is, they could write with extremely sophisticated language. So there's no doubt that they could have written the first five books of the Bible back in the days of Moses in the Bronze Age. Um, so, so here's the relevant bit of the text that's translated, cursed, 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 cursed by the God Yahweh, 
Uh, so that's amazing. The, the name Yahweh is there. Remember, uh, under the documentary hypothesis, the name Yahweh didn't exist. That's part of the Jehovah text line from the first millennium BC. Um, here it is in the 1400s BC. Um, so this just totally refutes that, that kind of nonsense. But you will die cursed, cursed, you will surely die, cursed by Yahweh, cursed, cursed, cursed. So this is the relevant bit. And why this perfectly aligns with Joshua, right? Because it was on Mount Ebel that the cursing was happening. This combined with this ancient altar that dates from the 15th century, this seems to be confirming, um, you know, along with those scarabs and stuff like that, the traditional date uh, in the 15th century BC for the wanderings of Israel uh, during the Bronze Age, not in the 1200s or 1100s uh, BC and stuff like that. And this is just a snippet. They're still working on translating. There's a lot more than just this in this text. Mm -hmm. um, and they're working on the peer-reviewed journal, which will be published at the end of summer. So again, there's a lot that we don't know yet, but this is just their first announcement uh, that sent shockwaves around the world. Um, there's, uh, yeah, so so the experts who've uh, analyzed this, um, in the first place, there is a bit of uh, lead that kind of like seals this, this curse tablet. Um, and they sent that off to the world's expert in that area to evaluate it. And he, he identified it as coming, the minerals came from a mine in Greece, somewhere in Greece, he named a specific place. Uh, and that was only uh, being mined to the ancient Near East during the time 1400s to 1300s BC. Uh, okay. So again, that's a dating indicator, as well as the text. Again, it's this proto-alphabetic letters, the oldest Hebrew known to that dates to this time. It has the name Yahweh, so it's a fully developed thing. And um, one of the experts in the language, he's identified that... Um, the some of the language on the tablet is very sophisticated and he can tell identify that it's indicative of a leader that had theological training in the way that he's in some of the things that he's said um about this tablet so hmm. that that's all consistent i mean that doesn't prove it's joshua it doesn't it's not absolute proof obviously but it seems like there's a lot of evidence that is consistent and piling up to being, yeah, this could be Joshua's actual altar in Joshua 8. And we have this text, you know, Joshua 8 talks about curses on this mountain. All of a sudden we have this curse text uh, mm -hmm. from Yahweh on this mountain. So in a nutshell, that's based on my memory, what, what it's all about. Dale, I've got a question for you. Um, how would, would there be any way we could know um, like with 80% certainty, I feel like that. Um, if we ever found something, could we identify it as original from Joshua? Like how, how would we go about doing that? Or is that even a possibility? Um, well, it's, it's very hard. I, I think it's a possibility. I mean, maybe if you say like, Oh, I, I was written by Joshua or something like that. Right. That sure. would be a, an indicator. But, uh, outside of that, it would have to be based on like, be doubted too though sorry of course i'd still be doubted of course, course. yeah yeah this yeah. is a fraud. Pseudo, that, that's pseudo joshua wrong. yeah pseudo yeah. joshua yeah <laughs> but I, I guess I maybe something in the external context like if we found stuff external to it um that indicated yeah this this is written here lies the text of joshua or something i don't know yeah, that'd um, be awesome but yeah outside of that it's very hard to like this individual wrote it and prove that yeah. Uh, so but, I mean the events the events are being correlated. I mean they're they're yeah. being being uh justified, you know. Mm -hmm. Um so let's get into this real quick before uh, Tyler, do you have anything before we move on? Well, I, I was just gonna clarify something. You had said, Dale, that that little bit of text, the curse, curse, cursed, that's not all there is. There's more text. They just the scholars haven't released it yet, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And, and there's, uh, it's awaiting peer review. And in fact, uh, unfortunately, there, there's even more text on because the way the curses work, you have to seal them, right? So it's, it's like, it's sealed. Right. And we don't have the technology, we know that there's stuff inside of it, more to read, but we'll break it if they open it to read it. So 
there's even stuff that uh, even more stuff about it that we're going to have to wait until technology yeah. catches up. Um, See, because what that reminds me of real quick, just real quick, is that Dead Sea Scroll that was really burnt and they couldn't open it, but they x-rayed it. And then that's how they found all these different things. But I'm yeah. probably with the lead and stuff that is in this tablet, they might not be able to do that with this one. Yeah, or... they, they use topography uh, analysis. So gotcha. uh, they ran it through uh, something that would give it topography, and that's how where they got the, the stuff out. You know, it's really awesome technology, if you ask me. I mean, it's very cutting edge. Uh, but, yeah, it's really cool stuff. Um, nice. I just think, uh, yeah, man, I mean, it's just, yeah. So, like, what I was going to do is, like, Dale, let's uh, let's talk about – the dating of the Exodus and stuff like that. I mean, uh, yeah. there's a lot of stuff that I think the audience, we need to clarify for the audience about the views that are currently in, in circulation about when the Exodus occurred, if it occurred and stuff like that. Why don't you just uh, inform the audience a little bit about that? Oh, goodness. okay. Um, all right. So, so I believe it or not, I didn't research that because I thought it was outside the scope of this show, but I, <laughs> I do, I do talk about it, right. As, as though it's right, true. Yeah. So basically just very, very generally speaking, um, the vast majority of secular atheists and even Christian, my goodness, Christians, yeah. uh, scholars do date the Exodus to the, uh, time of Ramses. Like they think he's the Pharaoh of the plagues and stuff like that. And, the Bible does even mention the name Ramses and, and the city of Ramses or something like that. Um, so that's when most people think that the Exodus happened. Um, but the people who made this discovery, the Associates for Biblical Research, who one reason or another, I've, I've always been partial to them. I think that they're onto something and they're, they're finding a lot of stuff. Like I said, they've made revelations in terms of Jericho and I and their excavations there. Um, and stuff like that. So I, I tend to take the traditional thing. I think the Bible talks about 400 years between the time of the Exodus and the judges. I, I think that's right. I think the Bible got that uh, probably correct. So all the findings that these guys are making, I think, is supporting that. And we're finding that the dating of schol like secular scholars from previous studies, the, there's always problems with it and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, so so basically the traditional view is that the Exodus took place in the 15th century, about 1446 BC. Um, and that's what this evidence seems to be supporting more so than the later date. Now, what what is significant about that view, uh, the older date? Is this the one that was theorized in patterns of, of Exodus or whatever? The documentary? Let's say that again. Sorry. Is the later or the earlier dating uh, the one that's presented in like Patterns of Exodus, the, the documentary? Patterns of Exodus. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, are you familiar with that documentary? I might be. I, I like it's not ringing any bells off. <laughs> no, it's all right, though. Okay. So what is what is what is significance between these these dates? I mean, what evidence do we have? To suggest this this date besides the Joshua Alter Alter uh, versus the evidence that has been compiling for the later date. Um. Well, like I said, I I didn't come prepared to, <laughs> right? but it's all good. Like I said, like I, I've presented a show on on RSM related to the evidence from Jericho. Uh, again, indicating that it's uh, from that time. I've forgotten all of it, unfortunately, because. I didn't research it for this show, but there, there are evidences that are suggestive. Now, I have to admit, to be fair, uh, the evidence is, is controversial. There are going to be people that try to interpret things differently, right? So, so, for example, in terms of this discovery, I mentioned one of the dating indicators is the scarabs, right? They date to Tutmos III. Uh, we know he ruled until he died about 1450 B.C., so that's butting up right against the yeah. Exodus time, right? Yeah. Then his son took over Amenhotep II. He was the, the bad pharaoh. Um, but with the scarabs, a skeptic will come in and they'll say, sure, we, we've got these scarabs. But you know what? Uh, those could just be later commemorative scarabs. So this Tutmos guy, he was such a snazzy ruler. He was so cool. Even after, centuries after the guy died, 
people made these scarabs for him and they were commemorative in nature. And that's how those got there. So they actually don't date to Tutmos the third. That's, that's what the skeptics or the secular atheists would, would respond to something like that dating evidence. Um, and then that's where it comes down to the associates from biblical research. They wanted to study these because there is a way to prove that they're original and not commemorative apparently, but guess what? The secular atheists have totally lost it. We don't, we no longer have access to these scarabs, so we can't do what we need to do to authenticate them. So now we're just kind of stuck um, and stuff like that. So that's sort of the complicated nature of the dating evidence. Does that, does that make sense? Like, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Tyler. I mean, I'm just sitting back listening and enjoying. I mean, yeah, it's bro. fascinating. It, it really is. And and I think that, you know, this this goes a long way. I mean, we see these parallels where, uh, you know, people always ask, well, why don't we have any evidence of the exodus, you know, and this and that. But here's a, a prime example of of an evidence that would complement what we think we should find. In the archaeological evidence, the reason you don't have any Semitic stuff out in the wilderness, so to speak, is because they plundered Egypt, right? They took stuff from Egypt. And what do you find uh, with this ancient Hebrew prototype writing? You find scarabs. I mean, it's just another it's another just, thing they found. Just that blows totally my mind. Another thing that they found in, in that circular um, circular thing. Uh, Uh, let me bring that up again for the peeps so they know what I'm talking. Another thing they found under this 15th century altar, this one underneath the, the main one that the atheist like, uh, they found hammers, little Egyptian hammers as well. Uh, oh, and another piece of dating that I totally forgot about is that they found uh, what's called a um, pumice chalice. Uh, and I think I have a picture of that. Here we go. So they found this pumice chalice in, in this Mount Ebel area under the altar. Uh, again, it dates from this year, from the 15th century BC kind of thing. They also found the exact same thing in Egypt, right in the area in Avris. This is where the Israelite slaves are known to have lived uh, uh -huh. during the time of the Exodus. So this is another dating indicator kind of thing that kind of links these two sites, just like the Bible says. That is crazy, bro. So it just, they keep coming up with more and more evidence. So let me ask you this, Dale, um, and, and if you don't know, it's fine. But what are the skeptics saying about this evidence that's coming to light? Are they stepping back and maybe considering this? Or are they just trying to, you know, do away with it? Um, so it, it's literally just come out in March of this year publicly. Okay, so, so there's not a lot of... And, and because, yeah, because they haven't published the peer review, it's, it's right. you know, they, they've just got like a press conference kind of thing out there. And, you know, Sean McDowell, he's done a show on it and stuff like that. So it's really pop level stuff. Yeah. Um, but what the, what the experts are saying, look, these findings are undeniable. Like the, the documentary hypothesis is in the garbage. The, Richard Dawkins wouldn't be so stupid as to advance this after this finding, right? Yeah. Um, but where they're going to debate, so obviously there's going to be debates about sort of the dating indicators. Um, there might be an issue. What, what results are we going to get with a new carbon dating? Is this going to line up or not? We don't know yet. Mm -hmm. Um, but we've got places that are not going to be controversial. We can't say they're contaminated. So if these give a date we don't like, then okay, then that's what it is. You, you got to take that. Um, right. There could be some controversies regarding some of the words because this is uh, proto, the proto alphabetic text is what it's called. So this is before proto Hebrew. This is the oldest thing ever known, right? And this is before the language was standardized. So there's different ways to read things, right? Um, sure. Like it, you could read left to right, right to left, or, or up to down. I, I don't know how, how they read it, but there's multiple ways of reading it. So there's probably going to be some skeptics saying, well, I disagree with your interpretation of this word. It should mean this. Right. That's what yeah, they're it, but, And that's the thing. Kind of like, we thing. know that context determines meaning and I don't think you can escape that context. That's why they were able to publish it. Uh, at least this part and the rest is going to be for later. 
Uh, but there's a lot of promising from what I, you know, remember from the video. There's a, it, it's promising. It's very, it, it's confirming. Uh, who was the the scholar that presented it? I can't remember his name, Dale. Do you remember? Oh, his name? oh uh, Scott Stippling or Stripling? Strip, yeah, Rippling or something like that. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, he wrote the first, I think, the first chapter of the Five Views of Exodus. So, if you guys want to see what what he thinks about when the Exodus occurred, you can look at that in that chapter there uh, and and see uh, what what he has to say about it. But uh, yeah, a lot of interesting folks were also uh, asking questions during that uh, that presentation that I was just like, okay, these are like some of the leading people that are talking about the Exodus and and stuff like that. These are some leading scholars asking questions about this find. And yeah, it's, it was it was a fascinating interview or yeah. press conference. Yeah, and just Scott Stripling is, is his name. Stripling? I just checked. Okay, Scott yeah. Stripling. It's uh, wow. here, I can share my screen and show people. Yeah. Uh, did you get the prototype for the name of God? Do you have that picture? <sighs> Oh, it's like those three little. Uh, yeah, I, 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 didn't, wrote it, I wrote it down, but I only wrote it down. I just copied what I saw. <laughs> I it's, I well, it. yeah, I didn't I didn't take the screenshot of that one. I'm, I'm an idiot, but uh, I can show you guys where to find it in the video, I guess. But, yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. Well, any, anyways, so here's uh, the Associates for Biblical Research. This is probably here. They are. Oh, there it is. There it is. About. Yep. There. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> about. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. So this is so this, cool. Like that's the name they used for that's Yahweh. Yahweh. Yeah, there that's we are. So, so that, that's what's on these tablets right there. That's the name Yahweh. Yahweh. Okay. Uh, part of it. Yeah, that's one of them. Yep. So yeah, uh, you can check it out on Associates for Biblical Research under Breaking News. By the way, if you're interested in uh, the evidence for the Exodus as a whole, here's one of the articles on Associates for Biblical Research that I find to be one of the best. Uh, it goes over all the factors. In terms of the dating, biblical chronology, the pharaohs. So this is one of the best articles I find. If you go into research and then go to like the Exodus, you'll you'll find these papers. So can you send us that link, Dell? We can put it in the description for our listeners if they want to check it out. Absolutely, yeah. Right on, right on. Let me post it up right now. Uh, so yeah, that's it. I'll just post the. Oops. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's all I got. Again. Um, Oh, goodness. We're getting a lot of comments here. Yep. So, yes, we've got Dale Glover. He has availed himself for the first time. For oh, the first time ever. Uh, <laughs> and this is yes, a favor Rigo, for uh, I know that I think that you're the one that said you met us through Dale's ministry as well. So, um, uh, I, one of you guys said that maybe. But yeah, uh, this is Dale Glover from Real Seekers and from Theo Geeks. Me and him do. We were doing a show about once a month on just nerding out on theology like this, like what we're doing now, where we just talk about our views and, and how we see things and, and and so forth. And Dale wanted to cover this a little bit today and, you know, just go over it and stuff like that. So, uh, yep, that's Dale Glover. You're seeing him for the first time. Don't forget – he might not see him again. We don't know. <laughs> but I told him already that he has not only a radio voice like Tyler does, but he also has a radio face. Look at that. He looks like he belongs on the radio behind the microphone. He does. does. You're, just, you're just buttering me up. Uh, uh, no, I'm, I'm I being think honest, this will be one and only time. I did it as a favor for you. But <laughs> after this, I'm I am a real person. Actually, no, I'm telling David um, – the real Dale is like off screen, and this is just an actor <laughs> the, mouthing the words at the same time. So, yeah, you're not you guys really are on point, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, yeah, but anyways, yeah, guys, this is Dale Glover from Real Seekers, and obviously, the guys from Faith Unaltered are on here too. Tyler wanted to nerd out with us, so he was like, Let's do it, let's talk about the curse tablet. So, yeah, right. it's it's really interesting, guys. Uh, well, what, again, this is cutting edge stuff. You know, let me let me ask you guys stuff again again because yeah, uh, it's not like I uh, research yeah. this in depth. But like, what is your guys' general take on the dating of the Exodus? Do you guys you just kind of go with the secularists or uh, don't don't care? Like, uh, I have heard uh, like we just had IP on last night, and yeah. uh, he's been back and forth on this. I think right now he does hold to a later date, and he presented a good video on it that I 
actually was uh, um, uh, interested in that that was really good, I thought. Um, so I'm kind of – I've always been up in the air about it. Um, I have dealt with more whether the exodus happened and what can we find that would – further that so um i haven't really settled myself i mean i've seen all the documentaries i've seen both sides but i haven't really settled on it but this seems to be very compelling uh to me and i would i, I can't wait till the rest of it comes out and what the peer review has to say about it so yeah because they, they they've even hinted like there, there's so much that they're not revealing because of the peer review thing that's going to be in that paper so i can't wait to to read it when it comes out that's my ahead. No, I'm just curious. So, and it's because I'm totally ignorant on this, but why do they release a little bit as a taste and then save? Are they saving like the better stuff for later? Or why didn't they just go ahead and release everything at once? So, so yeah, they're kind of saving the better stuff for later, right? So, like okay. with, with uh, journal peer reviewed journals, there are different types in this day and age. So, there are like open access journals or like online journals where it's kind of like it's really easy to publish like essentially if, if your check clear is you're published um <laughs> kind yeah. of thing right? whereas the more traditional peer review journals are more strict they're rigorous so, so i i encountered this with the stirp uh papers with the shroud of turin i mean this was 1978 it was it was they they had to be if even like one bit of their research got published or leaked mm -hmm. uh their papers would be bounced and the, the journals wouldn't publish it. So they're very, very strict. They want you to go to these professional papers and they don't want it like being leaked and stuff like that. So yeah, they're, they're strict rules. I, why is that the case? I don't know, but I guess so. they do it. Yeah. Richard said they moved up this release because another group of scholars were about to scoop them. Oh, so, that's good. all right. Very cool. Interesting. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, you know, and there's a lot of reasons to also do it. I mean, to uh, they have something that's pretty, they have some of this that by all, by all means is concrete. Yeah. So they release it mm -hmm. to the world so that it, it can get people interested so that when they do go to peer review, it's bounced off a lot of, a lot of scholarship. Right. So. Very awesome. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. But cool. Tyler, what do you think about the date of the Exodus, man? I don't care, honestly, like that. That's just <laughs> like, no, I mean, I'm not trying to cop out or nothing. It's just one thing that's never really interest me, you know, about the date of the Exodus. I mean, I think, I mean, I know it happened. Like, I believe it happened because the Bible says it does, you know, but it's just one of those things that I've never really found interest in. You know what I mean? Now, I will say this, you know, with the whole they and I don't know how true it is. Like, I've just done a little bit of research on it, but I, they found or or something about they found chariot wheels at the bottom of the the Red yeah, Sea or that's garbage, I, but... okay it is garbage okay fair enough so that's kind of the only thing that I've done but so Dale you know about that kind of stuff so what is what 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 is that exactly all about because I've seen it I've heard about that the chariot wheels why is it garbage um well it's yeah so basically i'm just going to appeal to scholar authority like even yeah, even the associates yeah, yeah. from biblical so these you know like discoveries by people like ron wyatt and stuff like that like they claim they found the ark of the covenant they found noah's ark they found all all this stuff but uh yeah. it, it's just it's not true like it's based on misunderstandings again well uh, there were, you know there's another hypothesis here too tyler that i thought was very compelling mm -hmm. um they said if the if there were the chariot wheels that if this coral had encompassed these uh, chariot wheels, right, mm -hmm. that it's doesn't mean that there was an exodus for the simple fact is where they found them was also a spot where they mass produced chariots. So mm. wheels that are like broken, they would have tossed in the sea. <laughs> it would have right. just it tossed them. So it could have so been you, that if it is a chariot wheel. It might not be. It might be something totally natural. Got huh. you. Yeah, and I should and I, I should qualify for myself because I'm literally uh it's been years since I researched yeah. the Exodus, right? I'm I'm admitting yeah. look I, I did like two hours of research before this show on, on this <laughs> Joshua thing and that was it. But um the ma mainstream scholarship has been wrong. They're wrong in this case. So yeah, I'm appealing to scholarly consensus. E even the associates for biblical research, they wouldn't agree with these chariot wheels. Okay, yeah. great. Maybe maybe they're wrong. Maybe they got it wrong. Maybe there is something there. I don't know. But uh, I just know that 
even evangelical Christian archaeologists are like, nah, this isn't yeah. this isn't working. So that's all. And I see, know. that's like some of the things too, you know, with with mainstream, you know, the consensus, so to say, like sometimes they are wrong whenever it comes to these kind of things. And so, how does that really? How, do, how let me put it like this: How does that interfere with appealing to the scholarly sources, right? Because we, David and I, have been talking about this. And it seems like whenever a new evidence comes out or, or something that's pointing away from the major consensus, it seems like that is put on a back burner for as long as it can possibly be until, you know, somebody makes a fuss about it because of the fact nobody wants to be wrong. Right. And so I don't know. I just feel like, you know, whenever a whole group of people are saying the same thing we shouldn't exclude any of the alternate explanations because again, we don't have a lot of the evidence that we need to make solid conclusions whenever there's still more things to be found. You know well, what I'm saying? Exactly. Especially when it comes to certain things, right? Like, so you get like something like the Exodus, which I think they said only a small percentage of Egypt has been excavated, like a super right. small person. I mean, something that would blow your mind. Like it's, it's, I think it was like down to like maybe not even 5%. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, yeah, right. it's, it's incredible. There's so, yeah. we just have, it's very, very fragmentary, especially from this period. That's, that's why I'm sort of yeah. fascinated yeah. by this. Uh, yeah. this I stuff. want to know what's under the Sphinx foot. That's all I want to know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, cause I was there back in 2012 when I went to Egypt. Uh, so what's there? What's there? There's, there's this like pink bunny. Uh, <laughs> okay. Fair enough. <laughs> not an elephant. Jokes, but, uh, hitting, an in, hitting an energizer drum. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, in terms of Egyptology, like uh, just like a few years ago, like I, in mainstream scholarship and how like their bias can it shouldn't just be believed in all cases. Like there's this uh, woman, Colombian. She's a, a freaking lawyer, not even an archaeologist, and uh, she's totally upended all of Egyptology because she's digging in the north um, of Egypt and she's looking for the burial place of. Mark Anthony and Cleopatra, right? Mm, yeah, I've she's heard a, that. you've heard this. There's a documentary on it, right? So she's identified this place, and all the Egyptologists, Zawi Hawis or Salima Ikram, they're all like, ah, this is nothing. There's nothing here. Egyptologists, professional Egyptologists, have have done their stuff. There's nothing to find. She's oh, totally revolutionized. Not only is the they've linked it, they found inscriptions, they found like a, a burial place, a priest. It was a huge temple, so. Yeah. I don't I don't know what's happened since then, but Egypt mainstream Egypt are so like maybe you have found the burial place of Cleopatra for crying out loud. So <laughs> yeah. it just shows you, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Like you yeah. always remain open minded and like realize the evidence we have and that scholars are basing on is fragmentary and it could change. Yeah. I'm always rooting for those underdogs. You know, there's a well, unless it's uh Richard Carrier, right? <laughs> 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 Richard yeah, Carrier, yeah, the Jesus mythicist. <laughs> just, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, like, uh, yeah, I, there's always the minority view, and and you know there is uh, a minority view on those type of things. So, yeah, uh, he just God, related you to God, Dale. <laughs> well, I'm How does that fit? Oh, he is who he is. <laughs> He's Dale. <laughs> Well, see, Travis, that's why I've got the glasses on for your protection. If you see my like beautiful eyes, you would just be destroyed in a second or something. Like, yeah, I'm shielding eyes. you, brother. <laughs> By the way, for the audience, I'm not trying to be cool with the glasses. Uh, just I have an eye thing, so that's why I need to wear them. I'm not trying to be cool, but I think you're pretty cool. So, yeah. oh, thank you, with or without the glasses. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. We all love here. Dale. Dale is our guy. Well, I mean, He's he said I was. Speaker. He said I was a cute girl, so I mean I gotta show up. So <laughs> yeah, you can say that. <laughs> Our audience yeah, is probably like, "Where is this going?" <laughs> well, uh, yeah. So, so, so <laughs> months ago, before before our launch, I uh, when I was making our avatars for like uh, the cartoon avatars that I make for the thumbnails and stuff, yeah. I uh, actually did a, a face swap, or not a face swap, but a merging of Tyler's face and and made it to where oh, it's like a face yeah, hat. Made that. him look yeah. like a woman, right? Yeah. <laughs> now I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and I posted on Facebook as a joke, like all the 
all the 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 Fifty Shades of Tyler, <laughs> and it had him as an old man, <laughs> you know, as a young man, as a kid. It's, it's and, a rare yeah. man that can seamless, seamlessly transition into actually looking like a girl. So uh, yeah, congratulations. Thank yeah, you. So Thank you. yeah, so <laughs> I take much pride in that, guys. I really do. So, but yeah, that's what we're talking about. See, this this is what the show's about. It's about having fun, nerding out a little bit, and talking about biblical stuff. But yeah, that's you right. know, it's it's really cool. I'm I'm so happy that they did come out with this a little bit because you know it's fascinating stuff, and and it's it's worth to dive into to kind of like look at it and and see where where you uh where you're uh you know where you're at with it. <laughs> Ringo Cat, I love that. Thank I you. love Ringo. <laughs> He's yes, our Scottish yeah, buddy. They, they yep. didn't know what, who they're messing with, man. I, I, yeah, they don't want to mess with the Highlands. Yeah, they'll take <laughs> that you out. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So, so yeah, that I think I think that's that's it in terms of the yeah, the show that I watch. Yeah. Um, but I'll, Dale, I'll I've got a question for you, sure. real, real quick. Is there any hints? Or, I mean, I know we said that this was the latest archaeological discovery that has hit, you know, the uh, the mainstream, basically. My question is, is that, do you know of any other things that are possibly in the works of coming out? Have you heard any rumors about any new, any newer archaeological discoveries or anything of that sort uh, that might be coming out soon? Um, not, not off the top of my head. Okay. So this paper that's getting ready to come out, this peer review for this topic that we're talking about now, the, the cursed tablets, that's the next big thing that's coming out, right? Definitely. Yeah. Gotcha. That's the thing to keep your eye. Pro probably by the end of the summer, they're saying it's going to be published. The peer okay. review. So. so yeah, folks, you've got the information. Uh, you have the preliminaries. You can dive into this yourself and make your own conclusion because at the end of the day, it's your choice. Uh, the, you know, as we always say in, in every broadcast, it's your choice. You know, um, at the end of the day, you choose. Right. So uh, with that, uh, Dale, what is going on with Real Seekers? You are doing some stuff. What are you doing, man? Yeah, so so the main thing that I'm that's important to me that I'm working on is uh, so I'm continuing on with my existence of God series. Uh, I want to finish off my hiddenness of God argument. Um, I've gotten a bit distracted because a fan request. So I've been I've got like review shows in the works um, and I'll, a couple guest shows. But uh, so my next show, I guess, in a review show will be on Islam. The topic comparing and contrasting. Uh, my notion of the Trinity uh, or Trinity monotheism, the William Lynn Craig's model, versus the Islamic doctrine of Tawhid, because uh, I think Muslims, uh, listeners of mine, sent me some videos saying why why um, some guy named Muslim metaphysician became a Muslim. Of course, one of his reasons is the Trinity is totally incoherent. Hmm. Um, so I defend the Trinity, but I also say Radical that... view of the Trinity, right? Sorry? <laughs> Radical view of the Trinity, right? No, I don't hold your Apollinarianism. No, no, I, I don't hold your view, David. No, I don't <laughs> uh, <laughs> some vague reformed, uh, whatever that means. Uh, <laughs> but uh, um, I also, what's new for the audience? Because my fans will have already heard me on the Trinity monotheism. They're bored. They've heard me. They're bored. Um, I also compare it in the second half to the doctrine of Tawhid, and I show that a lot of the logical problem of the one and the many that. Muslims use against the Trinity actually applies to them and the historical development um, of the doctrine of Tahid. I mean, starting with the controversy of the likeners, those who liken Allah to hu to human beings. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I get into the Mutazilla, the, the hyper-rationalists. Uh, they're kind of like the Aquinas's of the, of the Muslims. He's, he's absolute one, divine simplicity. His attributes uh, aren't multiple and stuff like that. And finally, we have the Asherite compromise, which Muslims take. This is kind of the Sunni position today for, for Muslims, right? It's kind of like uh, we just have, look, we admit that the Quran says Allah has these many, at, multiple attributes, um, but he's also absolutely one. He's, he's totally incomparable to anything that we understand on earth. How does this logically make sense? How could he be absolutely simple and also have diversity in terms of multiple properties and stuff like that. Uh, we just, we don't care. We just, we don't understand it. Allah is beyond our understanding. It's a mystery. They embrace the mystery. That's mm -hmm. called the Asherah compromise. Uh, so they're kind of embracing 
logical incoherence. And they even have a, a doctrine called bidah. So no religious innovation. It's illegal for Muslims to do what Christians do, where we use philosophy and try to work out, okay, which model, how do we make sense of the Trinity? Multiple persons within one per being. Uh, we can ask those questions. Muslims can't ask that question of Tawheed. So I, I kind of do a compare and contrast thing. Uh, that was way too long of an answer, so I'll shut up. But uh, No, no, that was good. That was good. That's interesting. Um, yeah, so guys, if, if you want to check out Dale's, you know, main squeeze of a channel, it is The Real Seekers, and you can find them on YouTube. Uh, and he has a blog on WordPress. He always tells me I forget about that. So, uh, <laughs> Lots of sources, free sources for everyone. So Yeah, yeah, hmm. man. And that's the beauty of this is we try to make this as free and accessible as possible. Um, yeah, yeah, so Theo Geeks Dale, we're working on our creation science series. Um, again, we've had Hugh Ross on. We've had Mike Jones for the science uh, stuff for people that have issues with, uh, um, you know, how they can – how can they believe something that's sci not scientifically proven? I mean, we talked about that last night. Um, yeah, so I, it was it was a great conversation, but we're doing this 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 thing on old Earth, young Earth, theistic evolution. We haven't quite touched theistic evolution yet. Not yet. Uh, uh, we have all summer to do it, but uh, yeah. I so did, we're I did hear your debate on the young Earth. I, I thought you guys both did a great job, by the way. Where do you stand, Where do you stand, Dale? What? Where do you stand? Old Earth or young Earth? Oh, uh, well, I'm, I'm an old earth kind of thing scientifically. I do believe that the Bible, like I was agreeing mostly with your proponent, like you, you, we've discussed this, right? Like in terms of the theological issue of death and, and the man, I, I did think that your proponent was making the better points. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's just because I'm biased. Uh, I already agreed with, with that position, but I do think... Yeah. But you, you have a weird way of how you got there. <laughs> it, it is very ad hoc, yeah. Um, he said it's very ad hoc. <laughs> it's extremely oh, ad hoc, yeah. But, but um, yeah, so like, uh, so you're old earth there. Um, I think what the, about the flood? Regional or global? Um, so I, I th you're asking me like science. So I think that, yeah, it was obviously regional kind of thing. Um, but again, I, I agree. If you're just taking the Bible as inerrant and literally, I think it teaches a global flood. I'm more convinced by the young earth side. So my man. Options. Uh so there's two options for me, right? How do how do I resolve that? And so number one, the way I used to is just I can accept errors, uh, minor errors. Okay, who yeah. cares? You don't believe in er inerrancy. Uh yeah. Well, I, I didn't. Now I'm agnostic on it. Um, yeah. because I've realized, I agree with Dr. William Lane Craig that the first 11 chapters of Genesis are the mytho history genre. Uh, so I don't have to resort to, well, it's an error in the Bible. No, that's just the myth part of the mytho history. Um, and it's not an error in the Bible. It's, I'm just reading it in light of the genre, uh, any more than it's an error to say, well, there's no five headed dragons popping out of the ocean or something in revelation. Um, right. That's apocalyptic genre, so you read it in that light. So uh, it's not an issue for me either, either way. Kind of thing. I'm glad, Dale, you said that because it sounds like what you're saying is whenever you whenever you go to the Bible, right, and you're just taking the Bible, the simplest reading of the text, it seems like it is, and I think we can back this up with church history and even Jewish history, that they thought that they this was talking about a global flood, right? I definitely think that. Yeah. So like Hugh Ross, I, I know he was on your show. I have massive respect for him. Oh, yeah. He would, he would kick my rumps uh, from here to Pluto in a debate. Yes. But I, I think well, that there's a reason for that. Because well, he's right. <laughs> heretic, right. So heretics have the best. No, sorry. <laughs> that was only to David. But um, finish your thought, Dale. <laughs> I think I want it because you're talking about science and stuff. So I, right. I do think that he, the problem with Hugh's take uh, uh, is that he commits uh, what's called concordism, right? He's, he's kind of trying to fit what he already knows in advance, modern science, and fit that into the Bible. And that's just how it, it seems to me. When you take a literal perspective of the Bible, when you're trying to say that it's the old earth, and again, Dave, me and David have kind of gone gone over that. I, I just don't, right. I don't buy it. I respect your guys' work. Your, Hugh Ross is way smarter than me, um, and I respect, I respect him as a Christian brother, but... Yeah, I just I don't buy his ex explanations in terms of trying to make the Bible literally be, explain an old earth that's consistent with the scientific evidence that we have. Right on, man. Right on. 
All right. So with that being said, um, guys, are we about to wrap it? We are or... about to wrap it. We well, are. Def definitely check us out. So David might have forgotten about this, but on Monday the 18th, we have Rob Solberg back on Faith Unaltered. He's actually debating Rabbi Tovia Singer on the 17th. So Sunday, he's debating him in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, it's going to be a in-person debate. And so I think, oh, man, why? Oh, well. I forget the exact topic. Oh, wait, wait. Is, is Jesus the uh, the Jewish Messiah? I'm pretty sure that's the topic of the debate. And so then on Monday, the day after their debate, we have Rob on uh, Faith Unaltered to do a debate review. And so I'm going to try to get some clips from that debate. Um, I'm, I need to talk with Rob to see if he can get me some of those. I don't know if they'll be released before we actually do the interview. So if that's the case, we might just do a record episode and then release it at after the debate gets released obviously right and and, and so, what day is that is he coming on that is june or july the 18th so that's yep. this monday yep. yep i will say uh you sh you should uh try to get rabbi tovia singer on sometime i think that would be interesting because he i find him a great guy he actually helped during my research phase i always i never uh forget the people who help me whether they're christian or not and tovia singer was someone who kind of helped me uh, and answered some of my questions and stuff like that. He was at an airport. He, he took like three hours and really on the phone about it. So uh, he's uh, he deserves as much. He's Jewish and he's against what I believe, but still, I respect that he is there to help people. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, he's a good guy. I would. Let's talk after this. I want to know how to get in contact with him. Um, it, do you know how to do that, Dale? Or uh, not off the top of my head, but he had a cell phone. So I, uh, he makes that publicly available at the time. And I just called that and okay. Oh, and yeah. Huh. Fair enough. All right. Well, let's talk after this and, uh, and I'll, uh, I'll see what I can do, but yeah. Hey, Dale, why don't you close us out? Okay. Uh, well, yeah. Th thank you for listening to me. Um, and on this topic, I, I find it interesting. It may not be for everybody in terms of old Testament archeology, span but it's just a, like a interest to me because I think it confirms the dates. And I'm sort of partial to, uh, in terms of the Exodus and the traditional dating, um, I like to believe that that's correct. And I think that the evidence, there's definitely a reasonable case to be made that it's correct. So I wanted to present part of that and maybe in future episodes, we'll get into the more general stuff on all of the evidence on Exodus that I wasn't able to, to give today. But uh, right on, man. thank you very much. All right.